we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is the most built, not bought car I have ever driven and probably I will ever get to drive. My name's Ross Bradley and it's a 360i BMW E30. And the reason it is a 360i because it has a V8 Chevrolet engine in it. Brought up through hot rodding drag racing, a bit inevitable really. It was going to have a V8 in it at some point. I've been tinkering with cars ever since I was little. Always been building engines, always been messing around with something always making things, and that's where the engineering came in as well. Oh. Oh. So I'm getting that just V8 muscle sound. I'm getting the turbo spool, I'm getting the dump valves. Oh. My whole body is tingling. I love it. Right, we've got two twin turbos, which are TO4Es, which are off of an Iveco truck. Engine is fully forged. Uh, forged crank rods and pistons, all handmade self-induction that I all handmade with the dump valve. The intake is Edelbrock, which is all aftermarket, which you can buy off the shelf from America. Injectors are 880cc a piece, which works out quite a bit of fuel in. Serpentine kit on the front with a long water pump. Twin tile 44mm wastegates. Coil packs are from a Ford KA, <laughs> believe it or not. Fuel pressure regulator fuel rails, brake pots, two-stage boost control, billet aluminium radiator, all the exhaust manifolds and downpipes right the way through to the back is all handmade. Three inch straight through from the back of the turbos to the back box and three inch twin tailpipe out the back. The performance figures are mental. I've never driven a car with as much power as this. At the moment, in standard guise, we're currently running about 550 brake horsepower. But if I flick a little switch, just where my right knee is, that's up a little bit to 800 horsepower. Bearing in mind it's 800 horsepower and 1350 kg curb weight, the turbocharged BMW 360 produces a power to weight ratio of, get this, 593 horsepower per tonne. For a bit of context, that's almost the exact figure of a Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitesse and about 42 horsepower per tonne more than a McLaren F1 car. Naturally then, this built not bought E30 has the potential to be devastatingly fast on a straight line. Although untested, Ross reckons the car is good for 60 miles an hour in 4 seconds dead, and based on calculations using his gear ratios and diff ratio, it should be able to hit 204 miles an hour. Other mod modifications I've done, um, whole rear end's been cut out and redone. Custom shafts, custom trailing arms, brakes. Fronts are off of an Evo 8. They're 330mm discs with AP Racing 6 pots. And the rears are BMW Z4 discs, 300mm with Brembo Porsche 4 pots. This is a one of a kind. It's, it's just insane. It looks amazing. The finish is stunning. The engineering that's gone into this car is second to none. Ross himself is an engineer, so everything that's been made has been made to fit. The stuff that he's put into this car is absolutely incredible. The gearbox is from a Mark III Supra. We've got a diff from an E28 M5. We've got Porsche calipers. You know, the list is absolutely endless. He just saw stuff it. Why not? It could work. I'm gonna make it work customising and cutting and welding, that's what I like doing. That's the best bit, making things fit. When a lot of people turn around and say, how did you fit that in there? Well, you make it fit, you don't, it don't just go in there on its own, you, you, you make things to make it fit. That's, that's the whole point of it. Ross's six litre twin turbocharged E30 sits on gas GHA coilovers, which, as you can see from these exterior shots and in-car footage, gives a firm but pretty planted ride. Currently, the height at the back means that the rear tyres on the Harker three-piece split wheels rub on the arches a fair bit, so the GHAs will have to be wound up slightly. What I don't really love is the uh, fuel economy. So we started on about 35 litres roughly two hours ago. Haven't been driving it too hard, and now we're at about six litres. So yeah, really quite thirsty. It is so fast, and at the flick of a switch, I've got 800 horsepower. 
<laughs> oh my god, this is on another level. But you know what? Despite the crazy power and despite the potential to rip your face off, it's a very easy car to drive. You can bumble about in fifth gear, as I'm doing now, 50 miles an hour. Everything's pretty calm. The steering is nice and light. The steering rack itself is fairly slow. So you need to you need to be on it if you're going around corners quickly. But the pedal weights are incredible. Got a really, really nice clutch feel. The throttle feel as well is magnificent. The only thing I will say is that the uh, that the brake pedal just feels a little bit too long for my liking. Nothing, 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 nothing. And there you go. Obviously with 17 by 10 j wheels on the rear, grip is very acceptable at moderate cornering speeds and quarter throttle. I didn't want to push the car any harder than that because one, I'm not Chris Harris and two, if I'd have lost control, I have the feeling that Ross would have taken me back to his garage and welded my face to an axle stand. The amount of time I put into it is, I probably couldn't even put into, into numbers really. It's years, years and years of hard labour. Money, I throw what I've got at it. It's took everything I have really, but I'm getting to the stage where I'm, I'm quite happy with it. So hopefully I can save some money now. <laughs> to put a V8 in an E30 and then to put two turbos on it just because you can. I really, really admire what Ross has done and I wish I knew how to do it because if I had his expertise, Lord knows what I would do. <laughs> Troubles throughout the build has been pretty straightforward really, but um, it's more of the after, the tinkering, the the teething problems it has. I mean, I've had a couple of fires. Turbos have been letting go, smoking, oil leaks, and that's that's just customising. That's that's what building the car's all about. I never give up on it. There was points where I was thinking it would never get done, it would never get done, it would never see the road, but it did. It got there at the end. You just got to keep pushing, keep going. A guy like Ross, a normal guy, is proof that you can make anything you want if you put your mind to it. You've got to do a bit of research obviously and you've got to know what you're doing but if you're umming and ahhing and thinking oh I'd really like to have something cool but I'm not really sure if I've got the time make time if you're a car guy you'll make time Ross thank you so much for letting me drive your car I know you don't really let people drive your pride and joy so this means a lot to me and I know it means a lot to you. Ross's unique, sexy and supercar powered E30 is easily the car that made my heart beat faster than anything else I've had the pleasure of driving. It's a masterpiece from an engineering standpoint and one of those cars you can't help but be a little bit afraid of. They say that you should do one thing every day that makes you scared or puts you out of your comfort zone. One month after driving this beautiful Widowmaker, I'm still riding that wave. The car means to me, more of a pride, pride and joy really. Just the amount of hours I've put into it, the amount of blood, sweat and tears, the things that have gone wrong, and you always come out the other side thinking, yeah, I, I've done that. I just love it. Most of my friends think I'm mental, but you only live once, why not? <laughs>